What's up? Dark Souls 2, five bosses per video. You know the drill. Let's get started with number 31 on the journey, the Blue Smelter Demon. And I have a few mixed feelings about this demon because it is a reskin, all right? It is basically the Smelter Demon, but blue. And I think it does magic attack instead of fire. So you might have to like change around your resistances. I don't know for sure though. I'm just pretty sure the boss weapon does magic. So I assume one of you lovely people in the comments will correct me though, if I'm wrong, or you could sing my praises for my godlike Dark Souls 2 knowledge. But besides that, yeah, it's just a different color reskin. Like we're playing Smash Bros, right? You click on the character and change the color. That's pretty much it. But that's where the mixed feelings come because I like the Smelter Demon fight and what the blue Smelter Demon does is it just makes it into a harder fight because this is kind of more late game and so as your upgrades start to matter less and less it's harder to be over leveled and you're more just forced to be under leveled especially with the DLC kind of up in the air on where the fuck you're even supposed to be because uh, most of them are actually difficult. And I like that. I like that they made this fight even harder because the the constant pressure of you chipping your health away slowly, but surely because of the fire in the Smelter Demon itself is dope. So when you ramp that up with the blue Smelter Demon, and then you also just make it so every single time he fucking hits you, you lose like two thirds of your health, the fight becomes very difficult quickly. And even like the arena itself kind of leads to it because you're basically in an enclosed area so you feel a bit claustrophobic and there's not a lot of room to even run around. It's just a decently sized circle but you know you could definitely have more room so you could create some distance a lot easier to heal but then again the smelter demon doesn't have a lot of move speed so that's not a much of a problem. But yeah it's it's hard to feel about it. I think I feel positively about this fight. Maybe, yeah, most people won't because it is just a complete reskin, but since the first fight was good, I'm not really mad that they reskinned at least a good fight. The only thing I wish they did better was the run-up because the run-up is pretty long and tedious because you just run past everything and pray you don't take a fuck ton of damage. And it's just weird because some of the DLC has like literally no run-up and some of it, as I will talk about shortly, has far too much. Overall though, this guy goes probably on like the top half of good versus bad, but like isn't really a top boss just because of the reskin element. And so we go to the next boss of this DLC, the Fume Knight. And like I fuck with the Fume Knight, I'm gonna be real, I'm sure most people do because he's one, badass looking, he kind of looks like Artorius, a little reminiscent of that, but a lot more darker. He's in a cave and he has the whole black armor aesthetic. And he's also a giant fucking man, probably taller than Velstat, just a beast of a man. Motherfucker's like 15'5", god damn. And he has the whole sword to kind of rep it too. But interestingly enough, I actually find the two phases of his fight to be kind of weird. I thought the first phase was honestly a little bit harder than the second phase. The first phase being when he has the long sword, his main Fume Knight greatsword weapon, and then like his short blade, maybe like a dagger or something. I thought the way he was doing the tempos of having a heavy slash mixed in with some quick ones was a lot more damning than like, oh, one giant sword that while has very wonky ass hitboxes. Wait, 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 wait. Trust me, I just showed you one. Doesn't really mix in the kind of combat I was looking for. It does a lot of damage and that's punishing, but it doesn't really throw me off as much as having two different play styles in one boss. You know, like most of the good, very difficult bosses that people like is stuff like Ornstein and Smau, where there's one boss that's very fast and one boss that's very heavy, and together they complement each other, but when you drag them apart and separate them, it's somewhat easier to take care of them. And I feel like just by getting him to half health, you drag him, the two playstyles apart just into one. That makes it a lot easier. You know, rolling in Dark Souls is your best friend and it kind of trivializes the game once you get good at it. And I feel like it kind of just trivializes this fight itself, but I still love it. And I'm also pretty sure the fight can be even harder if you don't break like all the statues outside of the boss arena. So maybe people don't do all those and it is a lot harder. But for me, it just took me six attempts not the worst and i think i forgot uh blue smelter demon took me 13 attempts which is the second most of the game still behind the royal rat authority so fuck me but yeah comparatively the blue smelter demon took me way longer to actually beat compared to the fume knight who i figured would take a long time because he looked really tough but like i said you kind of just rush him to that half health and he becomes easy to me at least i'm sure some people don't have it down as much but I prefer the slow play style to having a mixed one that throws me off like timings and whatnot. I hope there's a lot of lore to this guy too because I'm probably going to check it out. You know, all the cool bosses I kind of look into, 
especially for a big video later. But yeah, he's dope. Probably above the blue smelter demon, especially in this DLC, just because he's original. I'm pretty sure. So yeah, we fuck with that. And also I use his boss weapon now. So be looking for that because giant fucking greatsword. Yes, please. I hadn't been able to find a good one that scaled off strength enough, but here is finally one that will do the job. And next up is going to conclude this area of the DLC with the Alone Knight. Alone, 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 Yeah, the Alone, Alone, Knight. No, it's probably Alone Knight. But um, he is very cool, but we need to get something out of the way first. He has the absolute worst run up so far of any Souls like I've ever fucking played in my whole life. All right, it is dastardly that this can exist. Because like, you know, the Smelter Demon, okay, very shit run up, right? Fucking dog shit. The uh, Executioner's Chariot, really bad run up. But the thing that separates those from this is like those you could run by and miss like most of the attacks, right? Like sometimes you get hit by an arrow, sometimes you get hit by a whip just because they're long range. But in this shit, it is just not possible to do a run through. I had to do it 12 times and kill every enemy 12 times to do this shit because it was so fucking bad. There's the Doorway Knights and the and there's knights just in the fucking corridor so it's so hard to beat the ones in the corridor then get the ones in the doorway because you can't really run past one that's blocking the fucking door and then there's the fucking fire lizards that light up whole vertical lines of the fucking map i guess they'd be horizontal but you know what i fucking mean that shit is bad I didn't knock out the fire lizards completely because I don't think it's as bad when you don't have knights to fight. But like, goddamn, they do not need to be there either. Fuck off. Choose the knights or the fire lizards. Why are you torturing me like this? And so this fight ended up taking 12 attempts, mostly because when I actually made it to the fight, I had nothing to heal with and I was already hurt. So kind of rough. It probably only took me like uh, five or so full health attempts, you know, where I didn't have to fight anything before, but... You know, still got to count the ones I went in there. But I do like this boss because it's different from the Fume Knight and the Smelter Demon. It takes a very human approach at it, I guess. The Yellow Knight is basically just a fucking samurai guy who, yes, is giant or I'm really short. I can't tell still, but he doesn't have any like magical shit besides when he fucking strikes you through the chest with that shit and then gets buffed. But, you know, he doesn't have this magical sword or anything and he's not a demon. He's just really fucking fast and very fucking focused. I mean, this guy don't fuck around. He'll fucking hit you in two seconds from all the way across the map because he's fast as fuck, boy. And it makes it pretty difficult, especially because I prefer the slow shit. It's so easy to time the rolls. And this was just like, bam, in your face so fucking fast. Definitely took like a few attempts to get used to. So, you know, if I add those in to get used to, it probably takes like eight real attempts for me instead of like the five or the 12. But you know, circumstances of that god awful run up really fucked me. But yeah, I fuck with this guy. I think I probably will go with the Fume Knight over him just because the area was better for the Fume Knight. And I think the Fume Knight looks cooler. I mean, that giant ass great sword that fucking lights on fire or magic or whatever the fuck. And the Alone Knight's just like a samurai guy who's really fast and kind of annoying. Not to mention fucking terrible run up. Oh wait, I've mentioned that like 10 times. Yeah. God awful. Big show shit. I'll give one point to Dark Souls haters for this run up, but that's all you're getting out of me because I fuck with the rest, all right? Even if stuff is copy pasted, I don't really hate it, but you know, it's annoying. But it, it, once again, there's like 40 something bosses. Just move on. And that's kind of where we get to the next one. Going to the third DLC, the final DLC, before we take on the end of the game, we started off with Ava, King of Pets. Now, Ava, King of Pets is not a difficult fight, but it is a gimmick fight, and it took me two attempts, technically, if you count this bullshit, when I come in and I see, oh, there's fog over there. Oh, I walk in. Oh, it's a boss fight. Hold on. Where's the boss? Like, what's this bug? I don't see the boss. Oh, this motherfucker is really invisible. Like, what the fuck? So I try to fight it, and I maybe get two hits, and then I just be like, okay, well, I'm fucked, and I end up dying. But that shit was trippy as fuck. And so I look it up like, is this guy really supposed to be invisible? And it's like, no, you can fix it. Great. They really trolled me, making me think, oh, this area will just be boss rush. Let's go. Boss fight early. Boss fight middle. Boss fight end. It'll be chill as fuck. No. You have to go all the way around the map and do all this bullshit to get the knights for the final fight. 
and you have to make it so we can actually fucking see Ava. You have to like collect an item, I guess, lore reasons. I do wonder why the king of pets is invisible. Maybe it has like, um, since it's a king of pets, it has like chameleon gene in it. So it's not actually invisible, but camouflage, that would be cool. But we both know that's not what it is. It's probably some fucking dark magic, Dark Souls lore type beat because we're playing Dark Souls 2. Why the fuck did I even say that? The second attempt wasn't hard. It's not a very hard fight because Ava is kind of lame. It doesn't really do anything wild like, you know, if you think of some of the other kind of monster bosses. Even like the Royal Rat Authority boss was kind of like a wild animal, but this thing's kind of more precise and that leads it to be kind of dog shit. Especially when it only does like two moves, you know, it jumps away from you, shoots ice crystals at you that you literally just have to sprint to dodge. I mean, you know, not much there and then it just kind of comes and swipes at you. It's not like a ferocious king of pets or anything or fucking tiger, whatever it actually is, you know. It's just kind of chill, domesticated bitch. All right, if it's the Ivory King's pet, he needs to let that shit out in the wild so it can really become an untamed animal. God damn. Or just uh, get a new fucking king of pets. That'd be dope. Get a fucking dinosaur, all right? Go back in time, get a T-Rex, bam. Then dinosaurs are canon in Dark Souls and you have a way better king of pets and then you could make a Dark Souls game where you fucking kill dinosaurs. This would be hype. But that's really all I got to say about that boss. And it just kind of gets worse because then we go to 35, the final boss of the video, Zalin and Lud. And look, God Awful Run Up Aside, it wasn't as bad because you could kind of dodge things and it just took forever. You just have to look up the video and it's like, oh, look here, run at that, then run at that, then run at that, and you're there. It's bullshit. The Winterlands or whatever, they're fucking terrible. But it only took me four attempts on this one because it's not very hard to beat them because basically it's just Ava, the King of Pets. Copy and paste it twice. Think of this, think of this. The developer who made... Ava, King of Pets, basically made it. And then the person who's supposed to make Zalin was like, oh, hey, bro, can I borrow your homework? Like, let me get that shit. And he's like, yeah, yeah, make sure not to copy it too much, though. And then he makes Zalin. And it's like, yeah, um, you definitely copied that shit, but I guess you reskinned it. And then the motherfucker who had Lud went to the Zalin and was like, bro, you will not believe this, dog. My computer last night exploded because I played 10 hours straight of Helldivers. Can I see your homework? And Zalin was like, oh, fuck. I mean, I guess if he let me, I need to pass on the goodwill. So we gave it to a brother, but little did he know, bro just copied his shit straight out. Like, what the fuck? How do we get three of the same bosses all in order like that? God damn. I guess you could say, oh, it's an optional fight, but it's a fucking dog shit one. Because Ava isn't a very good boss. And so just having two more in a double, kind of double fight in quotations. I mean, they don't really show up till you get the other half health and then you just kind of kill them. They're not very strong. It's just whack. It was not worth running around in the fucking winter wonderland until I figured out, oh, there's an actual way to get there. Just bullshit. You know, like Blue Smelter Demon did it right. It changed enough and it made it really difficult. So there was kind of a, a jump in difficulty that I really appreciated. But there's not a jump in anything here except fucking laziness and the wretched ass run up. It would have been a cool area to kind of go to and fight some ice monster or something. But I don't know why we just end up fighting two dogs. It makes no sense. And whatever lore reason you have, I don't even care. All right, I don't care. Get me out of this place, please. Yeah, that's all I got to say about today's DS2 video. Next week or, you know, whenever I make the next video is going to be the final DS2 boss rush video. So look forward to that and savor your time on this one. Because then all I'm going to do left is make the one giant Dark Souls 2 video. Working on the Dark Souls 1 right now, so that probably won't be for like two or three months. We'll get that shit done one day, and hopefully Dark Souls 1 video before May? I mean, maybe if you guys complain in the comments, I'll do it. But it's just being a grind to get done, you know, having to record and edit when I have to go to work and shit. So just is going to take time because I want to get it perfect for you all. And I appreciate every one of you for watching, making it this far. And I will see you in the next one. See ya.